Hello, listeners. If you tuned in, I'd like to welcome you to our podcast. I'm one of your hosts. My name is Troy. I'm Mario. I told you, uh, I don't no. know how to do the guest intro. That's all right. Uh, so this we are back. And I say <laughs> we because Troy is back. And today is a very special episode because we have a very special guest, obviously. We have the Mario God himself, Doe Man Dinah. Appreciate that. How are you doing, brother? That. Man, I'm good, bro. Appreciate y'all having me, dog. Oh, for sure, man. It's honestly, uh, I was excited. I was low-key nervous because I, I definitely, like, really fuck with your music. Like, I, uh, I, it was in maybe 2000, like, 13, 14 when I found out about you. And That's crazy. That was through uh, one of my old teachers. Shout out Ms. Jet. And she put me on to you. And she was like... Were your teacher? <laughs> yeah, That's bro. Crazy. She used to fuck with me like that. Like, she knew the type of stuff I was into and what how it was. And she would always try to put me on. I think she was from Houston. So that's how she knew of you. Oh, that's crazy, bro. You know, like... And it's wild because I think teachers really fuck with my music. Because uh, cousin and all that good, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, she can say whatever you teacher, want. Yeah, teachers really fuck with my music. Because, like, I go to Atlanta, bro. I got I got booked for an event, uh, not an event. I got booked to go speak to a school in Atlanta, uh, like from a teacher. From I don't know if y'all know who Chase Serrano is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Chase Serrano had did a, a write up on me um, for uh, damn I forgot what the name of it. But it was like a branch off of e- uh, Grantland, ESPN. Uh, he did a big write up, and this dude just the teacher read it and was like, "Yo, he brought me to the students. Like he had a real fit. Like, and that shit's like super helpful. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. talking to the kids because they really." And you know what I'm saying? They need to hear some shit too, some positive shit. You know, that's awesome. Well, for those of you listening and watching, would you like to introduce yourself uh, if people aren't aware who you are? My name is Doe Man Dinah. I'm from Southeast Houston, Texas. I'm a professional hip hop artist, and my goal is to inspire and bring purpose. That's dope, dope. Uh, what part of um or what in part of Houston? I mean, and I know you said South. Uh, I'm from the southeast. I'm from so, Meadowbrook. Yes. Meadowbrook, yeah. Southeast yeah. Meadowbrook, yeah. That's where I'm from. Yeah. It's like a, uh, you know, it's a predominantly Latino neighborhood. But we, but like, it was like, oh, but in Houston, I always say it's so different versus like L.A. or other places. Like blacks and Mexicans are real. You know what I'm saying? It's really, really culture. Yeah, it's it's like uh, we're uh, we're kind of the, we're the same. Like we don't look at each other like yeah. Oh, we, we look at each other. That's where I, I guess like a lot of the like issues come in where people are like are conflicted about like when Mexicans say the N-word and now, but I mean, like, it's one of those situations where, like, we're a product of our environments, yet yeah. we do learn eventually what's right and wrong, but it's just one of the things we grew yeah. up with each other, like, mm-hmm. brothers and sisters. Yeah, we're not conscious of why it's wrong. Like, I was just having this conversation, like, because that word was in my vocabulary for a long time because it was just what I grew up around. And then you get smart. You get conscious, like, okay, this is wrong. Like, this is not, you know what I'm saying? Like, you you you, you learn and you grow and you're like, but also it's like, like, that's all we heard growing up. You know, that's yeah. how people talk. Yeah. It's like, so we didn't think it was wrong, but now we know that it is. But, um, and like, I, I was talking like, cause I got a lot of black homies. Like my, some of my best, best friends are black, you know? And we're like, we talk about it. We chop it up. Like, and even if, and one time, like shout out GT Garza, like, um, he, man, when I first got into music, he was like, yo bro. Like, and I was using the word in my, my music and he was like, Hey bro, like, don't you, he's like, no, I'm not going to tell you what to do. And I'm trying to give you advice. Like it'll probably be better if you don't. That's use a that good word. friend. Yeah. Yeah. Good looking too. Cause then like that, that, I mean, imagine if I did, I would have lost so many fans, at, yeah. especially right now in this time. It's, yeah. It's very sensitive you know? time. So yeah. Like, it's very... but yeah, nah, that's, that's crazy though, bro. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm, like I just want, uh, you know, I like how Will Smith, they said like, his grandma told him like stop using cuss words in your music like be, you can be smarter than that and find words to replace yeah. it yeah cuz he never he yeah he never cursed on any of his nah, albums he never he, nah, he never cussed that is pretty cool yeah yeah that's some crazy shit cuz uh, you, you open it up sorry i don't know i, I always found it that um uh, one of Houston's uh, spm uh, was mm-hmm. was under what a uh, kick i think and uh or I, I, f- I forgot what i heard but i know spm was the first like mexican to say to say the word and i was like oh maybe it's you know yeah, if like, he said it then we grew up listening yeah. to that too so oh, like part of like suc like yeah i mean he, I, like uh, now he wasn't part of suc i'm just saying like that's who that's the he era was that affiliated he was with them and it was that time and yeah like i mean and he's from south park and south park so it's a predominantly black neighborhood you know uh like i think he went to woodson and then and then he transferred to Milby, and that's where my parents went. Like that, he went to oh, shit. yeah. So we're like, like in the same area. Like Low G, that's my boy. Like that's that's like one of the real, like that's one of the real OGs in the city. Like every time he sees me, it's like all love. love. He gives me nothing but advice. Like 
like, he always tells me, like, I only see you like the, I see these other rappers. He's like, I see you like Cesar Chavez or like he goes like a leader. I don't see you like just as a rapper trying to make a wave to get on. And you know what I mean? He fucks with the movement. Yeah, man. like he's like, yeah, like he pulled up on me. I had a video shoot for uh, 97.9 the other day, the radio station in Houston. And uh, he pulled up on me just out of the love, you know what I'm saying? Didn't ask for nothing, just, you know, just a real one. But yeah. All of them. You know, Juan Gotti, he from my he from my neighborhood too. Like, yeah, yeah. That's live, and I'm gonna want to go into that a lot in a bit. But before we go on, I know you're here in Austin. It's it's been for a week now, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, shout out Certified for uh, helping set in, set this yeah, shout up. Out certified. Um, yeah, is there bro. any uh, shout outs? Any people that you've been rocking with this whole week that you want to show some love? Oh, to? oh yeah. Him? Shout out to DJ You Love I. That's my brother Miguelito. We'll have uh, you soon on the pod, bro. Yeah, that's my bro. Uh, <laughs> Uh, shout out my boy Trey Dirtbag. That's like one of the one of my real close homies. Like he like he, we saw like he be, what, that like that's love for him. Like he bailed me out of jail. I mean, he ain't even, yeah, he ain't even. You know what I'm saying? I didn't even know he was doing that, but he's is a that, real one. Is that part of the Dirtbag? Uh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, that. I always. Uh, I mean, as much as we always bring that name up, I'm just like. Oh, who is this guy? He just he's super low key. He doesn't uh yeah. from what I've heard, he just doesn't like attention like that. He yeah, just nah. moves behind a Yeah, he out the way. I I told him to come with me over here and he was like, Ah, oh, bro, I'll be low key. He's like, But I'll pull up on you after to hear the album. I was like, All right. Uh and then shout out Edward Castillo from Scoremore. We're of course uh we're looking to work together in the future, like get on endorsements and shit like that. That's like, awesome. Uh he's trying to get me linked up with Boost Mobile right now. And then shout out my manager, B Hobbs, you know, he's the man like like, like I felt like it was a point in my career where it was like, like just stopping, and then like everything was going down, and um, like people started giving up on me. And then like when I met, when I've been knowing B Hobbs, but it was it was South by 2018, and um, yeah. Long story short, like he just he took a chance on me, and we started making this shit happen. You know That's what I'm awesome. saying? That's awesome. Yeah, I yeah. fuck I fuck with him on Twitter. He be talking his shit. <laughs> Talking his bad shit, and I love it. I'll be having to tell him like, bro, yo, tweet. but I can't. I don't mean to tell him like, stop tweeting. I'll be like, yeah. bro, you gonna get me in some fights <laughs> and shit. Yeah, nah, that's my bro. I mean, other than that, like, you know, shout out my Theo Gonzalo out here, Liz, my cousin Victoria, like, shit. I'll, but I'll certify for show. That's my bro. Like, I met certified at a show, like, in 2013. Yeah, yeah y'all like, both been in this for for a good minute now. Man, ten thousand hours, and like, I just like it's that. uh persistence of everybody finding their own lane like now i see things the changing like the you know what i'm saying i see yeah. things elevating and like it's really finna go up like people are gonna be like and the people who do know they're gonna be like he deserved that shit and then other people are gonna be like oh that was overnight yeah, you know, that, where did this go where did this dude come from but he's a hard working genius for sure so mm -hmm. shout out certified we're gonna have you back we talked about it recently so it'll be coming up any shout outs for you mr comeback king uh yeah so um shout out to my uh my work for putting me out for three weeks um man if it's, it's so weird i totally forgot we had a shag note like a shout out segment i'm like i honestly haven't done them in the last two yeah. episodes I've, so, been doing, yeah. I've been doing this by myself and yeah, yeah. it's been random as shit yeah so uh you know uh shout out to the company i work for they uh sent me out they you know booked the hotels and uh i, I was out there helping out lake charles and beaumont and uh if y'all saw my um, Instagram feed or whatever, or my stories, and y'all saw how bad it is, it, it's it's really bad out there. It, looked, it was all tore. And um, I I just want to you know shout out to, to you know my, my company for taking the initiative to be like you know we need to go help them out. And uh, at first it was a, 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 a like a money grab, but then we started looking at it. It was like you know it's we're honestly helping out the city as much as we can because it is really bad uh, with the hurricane. Uh, what was it? I know the the one that just got hit with Delta. Wasn't uh, it Twins? The last one or what, what was it? Irie or something the like that. They, 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 Irene. Be they went like know. Delta now because they've already went through all the names. I think so. Now they're going through like Alpha, Omega, and stuff like that. So I think that's what the name was. If I'm wrong, my bad. But yeah, um, that's probably my biggest shout out because it was it was a uh, it was something uh, traveling for work, especially if you're by yourself and you're in a different city. It's uh, something I would. Say that you should do, but not for three weeks. You yeah. need to go fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah, being alone and far away from people, I'm sure it'll drive you. Yeah, for sure. That's my life. <laughs> a few of my shout-outs that I want to do real quick. Shout-out to you, Troy. I'm glad you're back because, yeah, it's been just me trying to figure all this out. And so far, I've managed, but it's I, I realize your stress is now. This whole time <laughs> that I'm like, bro, you got the video, you got the audio. He's like... I'll get it. And now I realize what what you go through. Yeah, so. it's a it's a I mean it's a 
it's a fun process, especially if you start hearing yourself drunk. But I mean, uh, whenever it's time to set up and everything, I mean, it's just talking it's and work. drinking. Yeah, it's work. And also, I want to give a shout out to Jay Soldier. We hit up his uh, album release last week. He dropped This Ain't Shit. And then uh, he dropped the hard copies that sold out with the extra content. And it was an awesome event because it was at the uh, Magic store. I don't know if you've been to Magic. It's up at the domain. It's the only black-owned store at the domain. Oh, word. So it's, it's, Me uh, and Dirtbag were uh, supposed to go to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whenever you can, bro, y'all should uh, hit it up. It's uh, at yeah, the domain. Uh, shout out King, uh, Kel. Uh, everybody that was out there, it was a fun time. It was just a listening party and all the merch he had. That's it was hard. really cool. Jay Soul just definitely a smart person. The way he handles every like new thing he drops and everything he's working on. So shout out to him and his whole team and Napalm and all of them. Napalm, yeah, no, that's what's up. And those are, I guess, all my shout outs. I have shout out to the listeners and viewers that I haven't lost for doing this by myself. Shout out to Break. Shout out Hack One. Shout out everybody else that's been still rocking with us. And yeah, um, I'm just happy to still be doing this. Um, if I, I can say, um, are we going to go, uh, I was going to say since you're from Houston and you know, uh, you know, I mean, there is so much fucking music in Houston, like artists wise, I, 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 I honestly, I'm out of questions. Yeah, I got, right. I have so much knowledge. I mean, the first Houston rapper I listened to was zero. I mean, I mean, I, yeah. I was, I was zero. Uh, did you have any influences when you were listening? Man. I know they said SPM and you know. was, I mean, honestly, I didn't, I, I, br- like I came up on like hip like old school hip hop like I came up on like Slick Rick I came up on like Dougie Fresh you know Slick Rick Dougie Fresh I came up on MC Bree like I, East my, Coast yeah up. yeah like the only Houston artist that I remember as a child like not like not like I'm talking about like not at like I'm not talking about the 05 era where like Mike Jones and Slim were popping I'm talking about like before that like when I fell in love with it when I was young I remember my pops had the uh the uh, Fat Pat album you know oh, what I'm shit. saying yeah Ghetto Dreams and I remember like just being like, oh shit, like this dude's crazy. But other than that, like, of course, when I got like a little older and then like still tipping and shit like that was dropping, like I thought for the longest time, I thought Paul Wall was Mexican and I was like so proud. Yeah. Like I was like, <laughs> like, they, like, like just going hard for him. But um, now, like, I mean, I'm just inspired by the culture too. You know, I don't, I, I feel like I don't make Houston music, but I make, you know, but you can, you're gonna feel it regardless. You're gonna be like, oh yeah, he is from the H. Like, you know, like I was just talking to somebody from uh from New York. I think that was uh, Miguel. Something. Dang, I can't forget her name, but she does some with a podcast too, or music. And uh, she was like, "Are you like how do you like you know what I'm saying like she, she never heard my music." She's like, uh, she was trying to get you to describe your sound. Yeah, I was like. East Coast and Houston. Like. And listen, like I, I've always, like I said, I've always been a fan. Um, just listening to it, it is very. Anybody could easily just say, "Oh, it's Texas rap," but it's it, it's until you actually like dive in and listen through your songs and the messages you have. Because I right. think my favorite album, probably the main one that I was listening to, and I have saved is uh, from my soul to yours. Oh yeah, I feel like that's a classic. Like the whole album. That's, front that was so slept on, bro. Like, and it, it and that was one. That was that time. That I was uh, like, okay. if everything was like, like people were just giving up on me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That was that time. Like, I had a homie, Marvin, he just, like, hey, I got a studio, bro, come record. Like, he's like, get in the studio, because I wasn't in the studio. That's, I, I mean, that's a, it's a really good album. Y'all should check it out. This is like, what, 2008, 18, 2017? 2018, like the end of 17, I believe. Like, the end, it was like, I think we dropped it like in December, because we did the show for it in Houston and we sold out. We sold out. Um, some venue, uh, I forgot how many people were there. Probably like almost eight hundred people there. But you, but you definitely came back hard because at this point you've already done what Rolling Loud, Rolling Loud. Uh, you've done uh, Jambalaya, Loud. yeah. My- and uh, I remember seeing you last year at a South by at the uh, Stubs. Yep, at yep, Stubbs, right? Yep. That was the JID show, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With Reason yeah. and everybody. I didn't even see JID. I wish I was. Yeah, it was a badass CJID. show, bro. Like, and I showed up early because like I saw you in the Word, lineup. And, I appreciate uh, it, bro. I think I had seen my homegirl. I don't know if you actually know her now. Her uh, Meg, Megan. She's from Scoremore as well, but oh man, she went and dapped it up, and I was like, ah, I want to say what's up. And at this time, I was like, when I was the podcast was starting to pick up, and I was like, I want to say what's up, see if he's down. But I was like, at the time, I was like. We're not there yet or whatever. Yeah, that yeah. I mean, you should have brought me. I, I I remember that day. That was that was like a that was an exciting day. You know what I'm saying? I'm the first time I ever performed that stuff was with propane. I don't, you know, propane yeah, is, um, yeah. that's one of that's like my bro, like for real, for real. Like outside of music, like you know, we look he looked out for me heavy. 
um, he, he put me on, the, and I remember that was like the biggest crowd I had ever been in at that time, in front of, and I was like, oh shit. Yeah, it definitely was an amazing show, like from beginning to end, and I think that's when uh, the baby started popping because was, he was on the lineup, right? The baby. I don't know. He probably was, but I remember it was a crazy lineup though. Yeah. Uh, and like, yeah, like the baby, he kind of he, he took the game by storm. Because you know? the year before that's when he was walking around in diapers on Sixth Street. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, right? Like <laughs> a year later, he blowing up every every song's the same, but everybody's bumping it. Yeah, now nah, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, and that's a lot of artists like that. I feel like for me, you know, I try to make. You gotta have a distinct sound, like. But now, recent, like, I I be so deep into the music, I be forgetting like this is entertainment. Yeah. You know, and then you have to be an entertainer. <laughs> so now we've been working on making like 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 the Different next styles. Yeah, but the next shit is gonna be like, uh, bro. I got five albums in my phone. And that's like, that's all you've been recording this whole week. That you've been here recording the whole week. Yesterday was probably the first day I didn't record because I was chilling with Miguel Crazy Ass. Just uh, party, bro. <laughs> he's like he's another level bro like like he like today he's a robot like i'm like bro how do yeah. you do that dog like i can you know i can drink i can go hard you know what i'm saying yeah. but talking about from 11 a.m to 4 a.m well that, man, that man's a veteran so <laughs> yeah oh yeah oh yeah he he he's another level of a human being i don't know what's but that's my dog but god damn that's awesome Mm. Is there any uh any people here that you're working with? I mean, aside from certifying and the, the usual, but like the people obviously that you've been connected with. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you like pay like from coming from a Houston perspective. Is it like do you pay attention to the Austin scene or is it something that I think you're our first uh, out of town yeah. artist. Word. First time we do yeah. somebody that's not from Austin. The only one, only man like I I know Tita. I don't we never worked together, but shout out Tita. I, I fuck with him. Um, shout out Kid Jones. I fuck with him. Uh, I just got put on Dirtbag actually put me on to this uh, a young boy AJ AJ Bray I believe Oh yeah yeah uh, but I'm not as far as like working with him I just got I just did a record with my little homie uh his name is Banco you know he came through dropped some dropped some paper for the feature you know just being a real one um Banco shit who else? Mm -hmm. nah bro I mean like honestly bro like I don't really even listen to rap like I listen to like oldies music like, like your soul. influences and stuff like that you're yeah, true to yeah like so oldies though like i'm talking about like james brown sonny osuna like you know you know i was so uh whenever i was at a ton i actually made a, a 70s playlist of you know like uh like really like the dynamites uh you have um uh curtis mayfield and um, you know uh, all these seventies, so like when, when, whenever you say uh james brown and all that i was like dude i was just <laughs> like the, the whole time like because uh I, i'm a musician and then i, I <clears throat> For some reason, I didn't even know that bass. Whenever you play ba boom, ba uh, back in the day for funk and soul, I didn't even realize it was that good. Oh yeah. So yeah. And a lot of a lot of those things are so are sampled so many times. You now know, they like, are, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you bring it back. I mean, they always say history repeats itself. I know? mean, look at Zero. I feel like all his music samples are like oldies. There was and, like, a, there was. I can't. Yeah. That's a, I can't. You know, I can't, I can't leave you alone. But I forgot who sings that or the original. But I can't leave Drank alone. Like yeah. you know, he has a he has the one though. with Chick. It's like boom. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, good times. We are. That one's off of the Revis. Uh, I think it's called Revis Presley. It's Revis like, Presley. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, and um, I started realizing like, oh, yeah, most of these samples are like distinguishable with the bass or even you know the chorus or whatever. So, you know, yeah. uh, it's it's good jamming like old school music. Man, that's I mean that's for me like it calms me down. Like I I be having a million things on my mind, and my mom always tells me like, man, you like. With from the music to it's hard like you know you know you got your like your you get you you can it's easy to develop the ego in music it's really easy oh, yeah. and i fight i battle with that you know because that all that ego can tear you know that can that can ruin friendships that can ruin relationships with your family that can ruin relationships with women when you start not like when you start not you know thinking you're above when you're not you're yeah. just all human you know so I, I i i deal with that and then then also knowing that sometimes i do have to have an ego sometimes you know like what jay-z said be confident some, yeah sometimes you need your ego got to remind these fools like you know and but it's also like with good people you got to have your ego to people who they they got ill intentions towards you and people yeah. have ill intentions like some people only want to be around you because of who you are some people you know what i mean maybe because you, you got to remember your humble beginnings and right. who you came up with because i definitely would agree with that because i feel like especially in the music industry there would be a lot of like sketch and shady people that you got to look out for and probably you probably think they want your best intention but in reality they're just 
Yeah, nah. same as everybody looking out for themselves. Yeah, for sure. They're opportunists. Like, you know, Nipsey always touched on that a lot. Like, you know, I hope your opportunity survive the opportunists. Like, and for me, I just feel like uh, a lot of people are like that. You just, and it's hard to find real, real people. You know what I'm saying? And that's for men and women. Straight up. So we are reaching our 20 minute mark, which means that we are going to take a shot. And this is cool because this is the second time I get to say this. And today's episode is sponsored by. Dos Cuernos Tequila, Austin's smoothest tequila to come out. Uh, check it out. We're about to taste it. Um, we will be doing a giveaway soon, so stay tuned. Um, Dos Cuernos. Tequila, tequila. All right, this is the more prosperity and purpose. You know to many, much, much success. Okay, Smith. So I was going to talk. That's good. I see you. I see you uh, rocking a throwback uh, Rockets jersey. You see the game last night? <laughs> oh man! Oh the uh, the Lakers game, yeah. bro. I, don't, I really don't even watch sports, but I, I, I all my I got so many homies. Like I get love in LA. Like I got so many homies out there, but I be fucking with them. I was like, I was like, y'all better enjoy this moment because if y'all play the Astros, we smacking on y'all. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But they like, bro. They hate like they hate the Astros. Over Didn't there. they go <laughs> like? Uh, uh, they were up by like nine points in the last game or like the, the the recent game that was just happening. I don't know. I mean, I couldn't tell you, bro. I just be like knowing. I'm like, who won? And they be like, all right, man. Like, I stopped watching sports. Like, I really don't even watch TV, bro. Like, if I do, I'd be watching like 90s movies or like, you know, I don't know. I just, I, I, when Houston like makes it to the playoffs and shit, like, okay, I'll go <laughs> watch this. You know, I'll watch the, uh, the games. But um, as far as like just all of a sudden, like, oh, shit, the game is on, you know, I'll be like, I don't know, bro. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I guess just a weird, a different dude. You know what I'm saying? I, I know for sure Houston is very like, like hard headed with the, like the whole, like bro, every sport, bro. They die for the, I, I was there. My one, dad would die for the Texans. I was there one year, bro, and it was uh, the Texans, and I think the Texans and the Cowboys were playing. But I was there with, I was wearing a Cowboys shirt. I was with somebody and. It was literally me, the only person in the whole bar clapping. When there was, and I was like, man, I got to dip before they start tripping on me because people were giving me ugly looks. And I was like, oh, ah, this dog, is Houston. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, nah, bro, like that, that. Okay, think about that, bro. In L.A., dog, they're like 20 times worse. Like, bro, like Raiders. Like, I got a homie. I don't know if you remember. You know who Ashton Matthews is? He was a rapper. He came up with the whole ASAP wave. He's hard. Uh, okay. He should be so. I feel like he should be on. Like he's he's one of my favorite. He's one of my favorite Latino artists. But just he's one of my favorite artists out of LA. Like off top. But uh, we get a record together. It came out on No Jumper not too long ago. It's called uh, Big Time. And it's hard. Um, uh, produced by a dude named Velas. That dude's like crazy. Does like Kanye shit. But um, anyhow, like uh, bro, he be going hard. Like for the Raiders. Like I told him, he's like, bro, we live this shit. Like you know what I'm saying? Like they do, cause I'm like man. But now, nah, yeah, my dad's like that. Like you walk into into to the crib and like text and shit. It's a religion, bro. And cowboys like and beehives is a cowboy fan. <laughs> so my dad, uh, walk, my dad, tragic talking. weekend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro, we both suck. I mean, who gives a fuck? <laughs> Texans and the cowboys is trash. I think bro. I think Dak is out of there though. I don't know if you saw, but uh, his yeah, ankle he, went the other direction. No, I didn't know that. He yeah, he, yeah, he broke his ankle. And, oh, or it's, it yeah, ter- look, yeah, it looks very unfortunate. <laughs> I'm Damn. not a Cowboys fan, but I mean, it sucks being a it, it sucks being a Boston fan for everything. <laughs> oh yeah, but y'all beat us like y'all beat us. Um, um, when was that? Y'all beat the Astros last year. Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm mostly. So I, I started off. I was like, all right, uh, Kevin Durant. I'm gonna be a Celtics fan. I was like, all right, I like uh, Randy Moss. I'm gonna be a New England Patriots fan. And I was like, you know, I don't even watch baseball. Fuck it, just be, be a Red Sox <laughs> fan. But I mean, that was like in junior high, and I just. I'm not gonna like. Are you still on. a Patriots fan or are you a Brady fan? I'm both. Okay, I respect that. Brady's a bad motherfucker. Though, <laughs> yeah, I, I hate like, to admit it. I hate that man, but he's so yeah, damn clutch. Yeah, nah, he's just a beast, dog. Uh, I play. I played a lot. Of, I mean, I played a lot of sports growing up. Uh, mostly, my main sport was boxing, you know, and then uh, play football. I was super cold at football. I was I was I was just so small, like especially in my weight, and I box, so I had to keep my weight at a certain oh, okay, weight. You know, yeah. I didn't want to, so I wasn't lifting. I wasn't doing nothing. So, I think after I broke, actually, my boy who plays for the LA, uh, he plays for the LA Rams. I believe he still does. Michael Brockers, big boy, like six eight. He's one. I broke my ankle. And he's one who carried me uh, from the oh field. shit, yeah, like, carried me off the field. Like, yeah, bro. After I broke my ankle, I was like, all right, fuck this. Like, I, yeah, I'm boxing. Like, yeah, <laughs> like, cause that shit was trash, bro. But um. 
I and play you, basketball. And you come from a family of boxers, right? All fight. Yeah, my, but my, I mean, but my, me and my brother are boxers. Well, he's a, my brother's still a boxer. He's a professional boxer. Uh, my dad, my uncles, you know, and all my like my dad, my uncles, like two, like all of them were kickboxers, mm. and Taekwondo kickboxers and shit like that. Um, yeah, nah, but we all, I mean, we all like fighters, like, and it's just it feels like it's just something that runs in our blood that you know. But we never use it for like oh no like foul shit like just yeah, to bully people you, you know we always do it to like I always like was the person protecting the people who got bullied in school you know what I'm saying yes, if somebody yeah. was bullying somebody I would bully yeah, the check bull- them yeah for sure every time yeah yeah you probably would have checked me I, I was a bully in school. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah for sure that's how we met he like came at me and was trying to think I, I yeah, stole I, shit from him yeah yeah that was engineer it's it's a it's a it's, it's a story it's just like I I don't know I was. I had a lot of anger management. This man came out of nowhere, tackled me, and was like, where's my PSP? And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? I was like, I got the wrong guy. You know? I had given, given, I had taken somebody else's PSP, but because I was taking it for somebody else, but he was after the different PSP. It was a whole, like, fucking conundrum. Yeah. That's one of the fucking ways we met. PSP. <laughs> my brother had a PSP. Good. That's how everybody had all the porno in fucking the locker room, bro. Yeah. <laughs> man, I, man, uh, that, man, that's crazy. Like I met my my like my my ace homie. I mean, we've been my boy Mike C. Like that's like my brother, bro. Like he been down through everything, ups and downs. But we met, bro, seven years old playing football. Oh shit! But we always was in the music. Like we was always talking about music. Like hey, you heard that album or like we uh, were talking about the Bow Wow album type shit. Like shit oh, like damn. that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like and shit, we just been rocking ever since. And you know, we trying this shit coming true now. And I believe, you know, it's That's coming to a beautiful fruit. thing. And it all can. I just feel like belief, you know, like like if you have to have the utmost belief and it's not even like, uh, people like when they don't know me, they're like, oh, this dude's super cocky. Like I can't like, you know, and it's like, nah, I'm not cocky. I'm confident. You know, I'm confident in myself a, and yeah, what I do. There's a you thin know? line between yeah. confidence and cockiness and it shows the way do you add arrogance, then there you go, cockiness, you know? Yeah, so. for sure. Yeah. And for me, I just believe, like, anything, say, like, with your, with your podcast, you know, or with yourself in your everyday life or your dreams, whatever your, the utmost, you know, whatever the biggest dream that people try to put, like, you know, their fears on you and be like, oh, that's just impossible. Like, you know, even family does that, bro. Like, I, I've been through put that. Put a little doubt in there. And- yeah, like, oh, like, that's, I think y'all can do that. Like, nah, bro. Dude, like, if you think about it, y'all doing what the fuck y'all want to do right now. Like, yeah, I mean, it just started off for fun, for the fuck of it, because I kept telling I was like, let's try a podcast. But, like, we have the equipment. Why not? And then here we are, you know. So do y'all be recording music too? Like, like as far as like as like like in the past, he did yeah, more. He, I, I actually bought all this to start a studio, and I'm still I'm still in the process because he's a musician and a producer too. So where, what type of music? Uh, anything to be to be yeah. honest. Uh, I I can play the guitar. I can I have a violin. Uh, I can play the keyboard, and uh, I grew up playing the flute and the percussion. Oh, that's hard, bro. I played I played uh, the snare drum. I played the snare drum in uh uh what what grade was I like fifth to seventh grade I played the snare drum but then they made me pick between football or oh, I should have stayed playing <laughs> snare I should have just stayed stuck with the snare because but now nah, that's crazy though bro guitar I I really love the guitar uh I really want to learn how to play the piano that's like one of my main things I want to learn how to play just because that shit is like that, that adds so much soul to music I believe yeah. you know, the, the keys add so much soul but like actually like why and one of the main reasons I got into music. My cousin, I got a cousin named Adrian, and he played the guitar, and he'll play the guitar for us, like, like, and just sing, and you know what I mean? Like, and you never know what you're doing to a child's mind, because, like, even if all my other cousins and my brothers weren't, like, they're just like, whatever. Yeah. Like, you're a rock star to, to, he was a rock star to me, you know, and I was just like, mm. damn, that's like, I, you know, I, I like the way he's making me feel, I want to make, you know, other people feel that way. Influence. Yeah, it was a heavy influence. My, shout out my cousin Adrian, bro. Like, I tell him that every time. We, we'll get we'll get turned together, and I'll be like, hey, I fucking, without you, I would have never done this shit. <laughs> get all fucked up and shit. That's awesome. Um, so I, I saw that uh, it's, it's Doe Man, and then you had X, and then you have the hat. I, I saw it on your Instagram. Uh, Dinah? Dina? Yeah. yeah. So what's up uh, with the Dinah? Well, is that like? That's the label. Like that's my label. That was, it started off like just in high school. I used to rap with a dude named Tone, and he was crazy with it. Like he was for sure better than me at the time. You know, he was crazy with it. Uh, he was a uh, he was a black artist. He was from uh, South Park too, and um, man, we we just started call, we at first we were saying the Dynasty, the Dynasty, the mm-hmm. Dynasty. So then we the, then we took <clears> off, you know, and then we called it Dinah, 
and then I figured out what Dinah stands for, and it's like power. You know what I mean? Like it stands for like the prefix uh, of the word. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Like, and um, we just man, but when we being young, it was just more like a gang. Like it was more just like a bunch of us. Like everybody was dying. It was like fifty of us. We used to run in parties, fuck them up, and dip. You know, <laughs> I used to have homegirls come to me like, shout out my homegirl on Medora. Every party she would throw, I'd be like. She would come to the door like, y'all, please don't fight. <laughs> you know don't drop like, tonight, y'all chill. Like, please don't fight. But, um, you know, time goes on and you see people start, you know, the falling yeah. off, falling off and doing whole shit and whoop, whoop, whoop. And then one by one, it was like it turned into the label. And then, uh, yeah, so it's just, you it, know, we're an independent label and uh, trying to take it, trying to take it there type shit. And is that a, that logo, is it like a Jorge, Jorge logo? Uh, nah, uh, George Pen uh, Peniche. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, bro. I, I but fuck with his. I fuck with everything he does, bro. Like I saw he dropped that Mario Carhartt, and I was like, I don't know if you're familiar, but I wear Carhartt just about all the time, you know. So yeah. I was like, man, I gotta cop that. But yeah, nah, uh, man. Shout out him. I haven't met him yet, but I'm I'm real cool oh, with shit. his wife though. Letty is my dog. Like when I go to L oh, shout out Letty in L A. I'm I'm, th I'm chaining in Austin, but she in L A. Mm -hmm. She's uh, you know, that's that's she's just even she's her own star. Like she worked in radio. She she's a real. I have like a lot of respect for her. Like I, she, she, I like she's a real hip hop head. Like she can she be teaching me shit about oh, hip hop. Shit. Uh, she look out for me anytime she can. Uh, she's actually gonna be the tag of the. You know how like, um, man, Rick Ross got like. Like Maybach, Maybach music. Like Maybach yeah. music. Oh, okay, She's okay. gonna do the Dinah. It's like Dinah oh, gang. Shit. Yeah, it's gonna be hard. I already oh, got it. Man. I just gotta get it uh like mixed and shit, yeah. but. Uh, and yeah, George, like that dude's a legend. Like I know Cypress. Uh, shout out my boy Cypress Moreno. Uh, he's going up in LA right now. Like, like he's a producer. He, he DJ for Shoreline Mafia. He oh, shit. he worked with he worked with pretty much anybody in LA you can name. Um, but um, shit, what was I saying about Cypress? Oh yeah, nah. Like I know that Cypress got. Uh, 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 he got a logo from from uh, Jorge, yeah. George. Yeah, Williams. I really like all the stuff he does because I follow him on Instagram and stuff. Like that. And I think he has that. Uh, that Jameson sponsorship, oh, I yeah. think. And oh, oh, you're talking about Georgie Film. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking you're talking. Oh, okay. My I, bad. I got yeah, the, I, like yeah. I. Yeah, you say hold here. I was like Georgie. That's yeah. how I read it. That's yeah, my bad. Yeah, yeah, Georgie. That's my bro. Yeah, Georgie's my dog. I mean, I got his hat in the whip. I was gonna wear it, but it just I I, I was I was running behind, so I didn't want to take time to iron and shit. But uh, yeah, not nah, Georgie. That's my dog. Like we we're working on a uh, on on a new video soon. You know he just been get, he just been blowing up, bro. Like he's yeah. been doing his fucking thing, and I'm so proud of him, man. Like him and Les, like uh, Les is my dog too. You know, but Georgie, like to see a Latino win like that, like that shit is just so inspiring. You know, and and it's like kind of like we, we elevate together, just the same way as my boy Hoodlum. Like like me and Hoodlum both been at moments where we look at each other like, damn, is this shit ever gonna work? And then we've been at moments like we're both did Mala Luna and we're backstage like, <laughs> oh shit, here we yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then it goes up and up and up from there. So, you know, yeah, now nah, Georgie, now nah, like uh, he ain't designed nothing for me, but he always shot my videos though. Yeah. But uh, like I, I don't want to take him out of his groove either. Who, who does all the merch? Mike C does all the merch that like, he designs. All okay. the merch. Yeah, Mike C is like a he's like a he's a humble genius. Like he does all the merch. He basically picks all the music you hear. He picks that music and like this is the music people need to hear. Like. Uh, he's like he's a VP of the, of the company, you know. The creative director. Yeah, he, he does everything that I, all I do is make the music, uh, do, show up to to do the videos, and kill the shows. You know what I mean? He does the rest pretty yeah. much. Him and Beehives, they without them, this shit wouldn't it, work. It takes a team for sure. And I, I and my boy Sal runs the businesses. Like it's like my brother. You know, he owns businesses. Like he's a dude that's super inspiring to me too. Uh, you know, it, he gives me the utmost belief and. I feel like, like those are things that you need around you in order to make a dream come true. Yeah, you know? of course, you need the right people around you. For sure. Without them, it wouldn't be no me. I agree, hundred percent. And uh, so, no, yeah, since you've been here, like well, it's been a week now, but I think you went off to San Antonio as well, right? Yeah, you've been yeah. mostly in Austin. Is there? I don't know. I don't know how often you do come to Austin or how much time you spend out here, but is there like a, a obvious like? difference between like the culture in houston and like here in austin? like san antonio and austin uh houston and austin oh yeah nah it's way di i mean it's way different like uh because I, I know houston's just houston as fuck yeah houston is like like i got a, okay i don't know if you ever heard of curtis coven uh he was a boxer out of austin texas 
No, I don't think he, he so. ended no. up killing. He killed. He killed somebody. He got in a oh, fight shit. and he killed somebody. Excuse me. And um, bro, basically, uh, he moved to Houston on, on some boxing shit, right? And he goes, "Man, what's up with y'all? What's up with y'all essays in Houston?" And I was like, "What you mean?" He's like, "All of y'all is like." On some mug and shit, like <laughs> it's 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 not like it, it's not a friendly neighbor. It's not a friendly city. You know what I'm saying? Like it is like, and I feel like Austin is more like you can you can have a good time and you like they got gangsters everywhere. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. I know you got gangsters everywhere. You're like don't I'm not trying to discredit that. I'm just saying that like in Houston, it's like it's like nine out of ten. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's like it and, really depends where you're at. Yeah, like yeah, like if you can go to like you know different um you can go to different places in Houston. And like, and you be good, and you go to some, and you already know it's trouble. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, but Austin, I love Austin. Honestly, my family, uh, uh, my Gonzalez, my my Gonzalez family, that's my name. Uh, they live, they're from Round Rock. Okay. So, so you know, I've been coming to Austin like all my life, uh, and shit. Like, really, I love it here, bro. Like, I could fuck around. Like, if I, you know, so I could fuck around and live here. The only thing is, like. I got a lot. I got a whole bunch of shit going in Houston as far You're as studio. in yeah, Houston. studios and all that, and good LA thing, too. Good thing it's close then, cause yeah, yeah, and I'll go to LA too. I love LA. LA's like my uh, like my that's my third home. You know, like here LA and Houston. I fuck with that's all somewhere them. I for sure have not been in, and I would love to. Um, but yeah, I agree. The the culture is definitely uh, uh, way different. I'm not so familiar with the with the new music scene out there. Uh, mm-hmm. That's obviously here in Austin, but in LA. They yeah, got a whole, they got a, it's a whole wave out there. Like, LA got a big wave. Like, Cypress Moreno, he's, and he's one of the leaders of that wave. Like, that's my bro. He's like the leader, like, uh, like as far as, like, to me, in my eyes, I don't know about anybody else, but he's putting on for artists. He puts on for me. Like, he doesn't, you know, he gave me, like, we got a whole album together, honestly. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 But LA, LA's going up, though. You know, it's it's uh it's kind of crazy because I think we had like two or three artists that were like, oh yeah, we just came back from L.A. and I was like, you know what? On, honestly, L.A. is the the place where you know all the labels, all the video stars. Like if you if if you're gonna make it big, it's probably either in L.A. or if you're, or I, I would say either New York or L.A. But I mean, oh, LA Atlanta is, too. Atlanta too. Yeah. A- Atlanta's yeah, heavy too. Yeah, like, it's the I, rap I, city. I, I, I've got a lot of people blown up out of Atlanta, like uh, my homie Contreras, Grip. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. LA though for sure. LA is like, um, but I also I've also seen the other side of it where people move to LA like, oh I'm finna go to LA and I'm finna blow up and then they like just get stuck just out flop. there. Flop. Yeah, like it not even do got no plan. Like it, yeah, I feel like that's just a huge risk and it's like you're it's a more very confident expensive. I, I feel like it's very expensive to live out there. Well, I mean if you're not like in the outskirts of you know. Oh no, nah, LA is super expensive, bro. LA is crazy, dog. Like I waste so much goddamn money in LA, bro. <laughs> like. Like over nothing, like food, like the shit that is like everyday shit, everyday things. Like I'm not saying like, oh, I go to LA and just pop. No, I like, like I got a home. I got, I got rich homies. You know what I'm saying? And they be like, bro, I go to LA and I'm like normal. Like <sighs> the money I'm making is normal. Like I'm not even special out here. Like that to me, that's like uh, LA's crazy expensive because and Austin's gonna get that way too because it's they're getting overpopulated. You know they call yeah, yeah. They, it's like a baby LA out here now. That's what yeah, they're trying I, to make it to be. I've heard them call Austin the White Atlanta. And that's crazy. Yeah, it's, you what know, it's, it's pretty true, bro. Like there, it, but what is the what is it predominantly over here? I mean, th- there is obviously like if you come to this like this type of neighborhood and other neighborhoods I, that I, are like hidden or not gentrified yet. Yeah, so I I, I think it goes for uh, gentrification first. It, I feel like it's more of a, a like rich and poor thing because I mean, thirty five anything west is Class. rich, and uh, you could be any race of color, which predominantly most of them are white, or if you go. Uh, the right of 35, we have gentrification. Yeah. Now we have a bunch of white people that are buying low-income houses and making it the 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 neighborhood bought, um, go yeah, up. Yeah, they gentrify. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, Austin's history is more is is still pretty relative to the way they segregated. Like he said, it's like you go on the east side of 35, you're in. You used to be in the poor neighborhoods, and mm-hmm. you would go on the west side of 35, you're in the higher end, but now it's changing the dynamics of it. Now they're buying out property in the east side and the south well, side Well, the way everywhere. they do it is, you know, they, 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 sell it to, they sell it to us whenever they feel like it, and then they come buy it back whenever they feel like it. It's the powers that be. Um, you know, they buy it at the lowest selling point, and then they then they flip it, and they sell it for higher. It's just a game, you know? Yeah. And that's why I look at it like they really, like, think about it like why are only Latinos, like in my neighborhood, like legitimately, bro, it, it's all a mental warfare thing, like, 
like in my like say well, we, yo, y'all have 35 in Houston we got 45 right that's our freeway mm-hmm. on my side of the neighborhood is all Mexican on the other side is all black we all go to school with each other, but this, that they set that up. That yeah. set up, bro. That wasn't just because. Or, yeah, we're forced to yeah, like, live a certain they way. Direct, they're directing you into where you need to be. Yeah. And, um, like, even, you know, Vanessa Ginn, like, uh, she uh, yeah. like she went to my high school. Oh, no shit? Yeah. I'm going to go too. All right. Yeah, she went to my high school, bro. Um, uh, May so, she rest in peace. Yeah, RIP. I'm making a record dedicated to her. Y'all the first oh, people that know that, Can't wait too. to hear that. Oh, yeah, it's going to be crazy. I mean, like I was talking to my boy about it. I was talking actually it was Edward Castillo, Edward from Scoremore. Uh, Man, shout out Edward. He definitely has done a lot in the city. Just not only like he's a legend. Oh, yeah, man. starting off from hey, Scoremore. Bro, I'm call you right back. I'm doing this podcast. <laughs> Excuse me. The busy, busy man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all good, bro. Nah, we won't keep you. But uh, honestly, just tell you, keep on telling your story. We won't keep you long. Oh, uh, about Edward. Oh, nah. He just said like. Um, um, Hey, bro, we need to make like you know we need to do something for Vanessa again. Like you need to, hey, I want, I'm trying to bring Edward on the team. We got to sit down, and I just want to, you know, he he's down to get on it. He's with it, like, and that's my bro. Like he's honestly, every even when times been low, even when times been down, he always like you know keep going, you know keep going. Hey, bro, don't stop. Hey, you got it. Like don't let nothing discourage. He's, you. he's definitely a Southside legend here in, in this. Like, yeah, you know, so like yeah. I've spoken to him about having him come on the podcast, and hopefully it'll happen sooner than later. All but right. Uh, it's yeah, definitely like somebody some... who's an icon in the city for what he does alone. Like, not even just trying to, like, flaunt or flex nah, yeah. or whatever, you know? Yeah, he's super solid, bro. He's super solid. He, he's been thorough. You know, every endeavor I've, I've had with him, he's been thorough. You know, super, super, super real. Looking out for me, you know. One of a kind. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, yeah, so we doing, we doing it, you know, we trying to make music with purpose. The next, the next record, we dropping a record on October 23rd. It's called America with three Ks. And uh, okay. the cover is Donald Trump's head cut off. You know what I'm saying? Like hard. It is the the underline of it is uh, make Mex- make Texas Mexico again. Oh, like you know I cannot wait to hear that. Yeah. You I know sh- somebody that I I think you would definitely make a great combo with. And I spoke to him and I I wanted you to meet him, but unfortunately everybody's busy. But uh, I don't know if you've heard of a uh, uh, vintage J. He's from here. He's from North Austin, but he's definitely done a lot in the city as far as like. Starting a like uh I don't think I ever like heard of them no. charity like helping out like the like the lesser that are able to like oh, that's starting hard. out groups and like doing above and beyond like at the beginning of quarantine he hit me up and it was like him I and uh, Manny Mo my girlfriend and uh, Manny my Mo, roommate Dwayne met him last night shout him out and we went out and provided like uh, necessities to to the people that are downtown living homeless you know he's mm-hmm. that type of person where he's gonna actually stick his neck out like nobody's doing nothing all right yeah, I got people. this. So I think that's somebody you definitely should link up For with sure. uh, Vintage J. Shout out Vintage J, bro. I see you. Shot, Vintage J. Let's take this shot, and then we're going to go into our last segment. Let's do it. Let's do it. Cheers. Hey, cheers, brother. All right. Oh. So our last segment. There's always, um, you know, a positive segment. Um, anything that's going on, anything that's happening, anything you, you know, um, whether you have, like, you know, anything positive to leave the listeners? God damn. Uh, yeah, I, I got you, boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have anything, Doman? Mm. Shit, like just, just positivity, just, yeah. just being positive. Anything positive. Uh, I just want to tell everybody, you know, we all got to rise up as a people. Anybody going through internal struggles, you know, it always going to get better. If it feels, I heard this from Abso, and he's like, if it feels like hell, that means heaven around the corner. Uh, don't give up on your dreams. Always go hard for what you believe in, even if nobody else can see it. You got to see it and see it through. Um, take it anywhere you want to take it. You know what I'm saying? Wake up every day. Thank God. Because every day above ground is a good day. You know what I'm saying? RIP my boy T.I.G. RIP Lil Les. RIP Joe Angel. RIP Anthony. You know, RIP Anissa. Uh, you know, they, they give me, you know, the purpose to live. RIP Theo Johnny. You know, uh, you got every day you wake up, you got to take every breath for what it is and every step, you know what I'm saying, make it, may it be in your favor. Just know that you you, you got to be the master of your fate. You got to, you got to, uh, you know, put your best foot forward for what you really want out of this life and just stay down and you're going to get it for the factuals. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> it's hard to follow up, man. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I'm starting to feel pretty selfish now. Did but you yes, want so me to uh, go? Or do you yes, want, go. Okay. Please <laughs> go <right ahead. laughs> All right. So uh, my positive is that um, you know, uh, like I said at the beginning of the, at the episode, I was out for three weeks. I was doing 
uh, contingency team for FedEx, and uh, now I'm back. And uh, honestly, that's my positive note because whenever I was over there, uh, there was some times where like I was losing my mind, and I was working like 12-hour days, and mm. I would have to drive 40 minutes from the terminal and drive 40 minutes back, and then it's like 10 o'clock, and I can't find nothing to eat. So uh, I would say, you know, uh, mental awareness, uh, mm. be be that's very mm, very positive. Mental uh, as, awareness month. Uh, as much as uh, you know. Uh, shit that you go through from work or from anything that's happening just keep a positive note there's always something on the other side if you put as much work in because right. i've never worked as hard uh with this company as i did when i was over there and mm -hmm. there were some times where i was like i don't think i can do this but the payout was very very gracious and uh i'm i've, I've always thought about you know like just stay positive and as much as i think i don't think it's, I it's, can be positive, uh, it's, always, it's gonna be all right yeah it's always going to be all right. Sure. I love that. And I guess so mine, I guess in the sense to piggyback off of Troy, it is, like I said, it is Mental Awareness Month. And like I said in the beginning of the podcast when we first started and people were asking why we started this, I did mention that at the time before we started recording, I had so much change going on in my life. I was going through a lot of stuff. I had little to no time to myself. And I was in a very dark spot. And I was just somewhere where I don't want to go back to and luckily with the podcast it helped pull me out of that and something to look for every week and where I'm at now and where we're at now with the podcast and the people that we're fortunate to, enough to meet I'm grateful where we're at but at the same time in the past few months with everything going on I have still felt conflicted but it's still no matter what happens when you in your moment it's doubt and the moments where you feel like giving up and quitting, like just keep pushing. You never know how close you are to you. You hit a moment or a bump to where it's like, oh shit, this shit is real, and there's potential in you. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like like a, like again, thank you for pulling up and coming through. Like, it's, sure. yeah, I honestly, really you are. It. You're you're probably like whenever we bring guests on, I'm like, there's guests that actually want to be like, you know, or like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know yeah. that. Like, I was part of it. I was definitely nervous about it. Like, but at the same time, yeah. I am grateful, and it. I'm just makes me want to keep pushing more and more with the podcast and everything we have and i have so many ideas that i want to bring to life and they will happen sure. but Chase your dream. same as both of the messages just keep pushing you never know you keep working and grinding and stay true to yourself yeah, that's yeah. mine yeah, all right yeah. so uh i guess we're gonna end the podcast i'm your host my name is troy i'm Maury from the south side don't man dying to dine again forever I put my passion in poems, I put my past in my poems My happy sad in these poems, I gave my last to these poems Woo. I should have been on, but just know that I've been strong And I maneuver through the demons, my body's here but I've been gone and lately I've been focused on closure with all my old friends I'm sorry I ain't been around but my hustle knows no end I'm staring out the window what is plain just contemplating life Thinking the mistakes I made and when I write I make them right Did I make the right decisions? Did I make the right mistakes? I'm sick of going negative and sleeping at my mama's place would I be better off in college with an average pension? If I was a scholar, would they keep my homies out of prison? The funny thing about the past is that it never changes. The future has so many turns, that shit is hella dangerous. And there's so many angles, me I only pray to angels. Reminiscing back in 13, I should've had a halo. Why did God keep me here but took my friends home? I fell down badly, but I'm back up on my 10 toes. I'm feeling stagnant, I feel a loss of passion. Off and on this rap shit, they feel a loss of action. I might just get a job better off and all them plant shit. Cause it feels worthless without a dollar in your pants shit. The nightmares that we screamed about, opposite what we dreamed about. Had this dream forever now, I'm just trying to see it out.